Hello everyone, Roman from Happy Visions bringing you another video on time-lapse photography. Today we'll be going over how to edit your photographs in Lightroom and how to then use Lightroom to export them as a video. So first things first, you have to make sure that you have all of the photographs for your time-lapse in their own folder. Um, otherwise you'll have random photographs that, that will become part of your video and they'll just sort of appear in your video. So I have my 586 photographs that I've taken for this time-lapse in their own folder named regular. The name of the folder isn't important, but it is important that they're separated from the rest of your photographs in your library. So once you have that, uh, just open up the first photograph, click on it, and then click on develop. And the first thing you want to do is crop it to a 16 by 9 aspect ratio, because this is the aspect ratio of 720p and 1080p uh, HD resolution. So I'm just going to quickly crop it to there. I'm satisfied with that. I'm going to click enter or you could click done here. Next things on the list would be to change the color of the sky. I'm not really sh too crazy about this color. So I'm just going to quickly go into split toning, uh, up the saturation for the shadows and then change it to be a bit slightly more blue. Um, that's good enough just for this purpose of this video. I'm going to leave split toning, go under basics, and then quickly up the clarity so I can see the stars. Because when you export the video, you're actually going to lose resolution, which is going to kill a little bit of the detail in here. Uh, by upping the clarity, I make sure to retain some of that detail when you export the video. Um, besides that, you could go about and do your regular edits. It really doesn't matter what edit you do because you're going to apply this edit to all of your photographs. And I'm going to show you how to do that really quickly here. You're just going to go down here so you can see a preview of all the photographs that you have in this folder. You can either go to the right with the first photo selected, like this. Hold shift and click on the rightmost photo. Or you could just, while this is open here, you could just click control A. And then hide that and click on this button that says sync. This is going to ask you what you want to synchronize between each of the photographs that you have selected. I'm just going to keep everything checked off, even though I didn't necessarily edit some of these things, like I didn't edit black clipping, white clipping, shadows, how it's contrast. But just for time's sake, I'll leave them all selected. You could go through each of these individually and determine which of them you actually had them selected if you have a slow computer. Um, but this is going to go by really quickly. So I'm just going to click on synchronize. That's going to apply the edit I just did to all the photographs that I have in this folder and we're one step closer to creating a slideshow. Okay, and you can see here the thumbnails are slowly getting updated with the edit that I just did. So the next important thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to go into slideshow and you're going to need to create a series of templates for yourself because you're not going to have user templates in Lightroom unless you've already done this before that is. All you're going to go all you're going to do is just click on this slideshow tab up here, do new template. Uh, you can name this template whatever you want. So let's say you're starting out with the typical 24 frames per second, time lapse, 720p template. You're going to click create. Then you're going to want to go through all these little options that you have on the right. So options, zoom to fill frame is the only option uh, that you want to have checked off here. Then you could hide that. Layout, show guidelines, that's not really important. You could have that checked or unchecked. It's it's really irrelevant. Overlays, uh, again, make sure you don't have anything checked off here unless you want to watermark your entire video. Backdrop, again, you don't really need anything because we made sure to fill the entire frame by changing to 16 by 9 aspect ratio. Titles, you really don't have a choice here with the add identity plate, but don't have an intro screen or an ending screen. Just leave that blank. Playback, this is the most important thing you're going to want to change. You want to make sure that you have um, slide duration checked. Now you can see here that I have it set to zero seconds for slides and zero seconds of fades, even though that's technically not within the possibilities of Lightroom. If you see here, I click on this and I click away, Lightroom is going to yell at me saying that I need a number between 0 0.1 and 20 for my slide duration. It's then going to force me to change that to something, so 0 0.1, um, and that's really not the time we want, because that means with 0 0.1, we will be getting 10 frames per second, and that's really not what we want at all. 
So what you're going to want to do is you can see here, uh, right here, is the template I just created for this video. You're going to click on it to highlight it, and then you can actually right click and click on Show and Explore. It's going to open up the folder that that file is in. Now if you're on a Windows, uh, you're going to want to open that file then with Notepad. And if you're on a Mac, I'm not exactly sure what program it, it is. Um, probably text edit. Open up, up with text edit and just find where it says speed. So if you want to do that a little bit faster, just click Control F and type in speed. Um, it'll speed up the process. Okay. So here you can see this is how long each frame actually is. Um, for my 24 frames per second time lapse. This is not 24 frames per second. This is 23.97 frames per second. So if you want to be able to calculate how um, the decimal for whatever frames per second you want to do, you just do 1 divided by the number of frames per second. So 1 divided by 24, which is what I'm on, it's just going to equal 0.05. Oops, yes, no, 0.041. Sorry, I was thinking of some, something else. I was thinking of 20 frames per second. Okay, so then you're just going to, uh, you can't copy from calculator, but you're just going to type most of that, and you don't have to do as many sixes as they do in the calculator. So just do 0.41666666. Okay, uh, that's good, but let's just say, for example, if you wanted to do 30 frames per second, 1 divided by 30 would get you 0.033333. Okay. So once you have the speed set to whatever frames per second it is you want to achieve, uh, just do file save, and that's all you really have to do. You're done, just close all the folders, and now when you click export video, the whole thing will render. It'll appear in the folder that you want it to, usually the folder where your photographs are contained. And just so I can show you, I don't want to export it right now, because exporting a video actually takes a little bit time. I have pre-rendered it here. So this is my time lapse at 24 frames per second. Okay, um, I hope you found this useful. If you have any questions, definitely feel free to ask in the comments. I'll be sure to reply. Um, that was just a simple way of using Lightroom to edit your photographs for time lapse. Mass edit your photographs for time lapse is the key thing. Um, you're not spending a lot of time individually editing each photo, although you could if you wanted to, but it is easier to at least sync. The first thing you want to do is at least sync the crop that you make so you have the same composition in each photograph. Lightroom is a really useful tool if you're doing time-lapse photography where you're not changing the camera position at all. So basically it only actually ends up working for time-lapse photography that you do with a tripod and very little shake or blur. Uh, because Lightroom does not have video stabilization. That's going to be a separate program if I ever get to that video. Um, this is how I do most of, almost all of my time-lapse photography. But I'll be sure to upload any videos using any other programs that I do learn, because I do plan to use some uh, new programs by the end of summer. So again, if you have any questions, please leave them below. All right, thank you. Have a nice day.